tune in for Patrick Ching's Painting in Paradise. Aloha, I'm Patrick Ching and thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. This episode is about Hawaii's lighthouses. We'll visit the lighthouses throughout the state, then I'll show you how to draw the Makapu Lighthouse on Oahu. We'll start a new segment of the show called Art Talk, and then I'll give you tips on painting lighthouses. All this and more on an illuminating episode of... Painting in Paradise! <laughs> Hawaii's monk seals and green sea turtles have been around for millions of years. When their numbers got low, they became protected by law. These animals are returning to beaches they've not come to for hundreds of years. This causes excitement and sometimes conflict. Honuen Hina is a children's book that was painted with aloha by many artists of all ages. This story of coexistence answers some questions about the history of these animals, but more importantly, about their future. Available at the Kilauea Lighthouse, Patrick Ching Art in the Princeville Center, or online at patrickchingart.com. I've been so interested in lighthouses since I was a kid. There's so many things to know about lighthouses, but I'm only going to touch on some of them, especially the ones that I think are important for artists to know. The concept of lighthouses goes back to ancient times when fires were built at points of land as a way to guide mariners around hazardous land areas. As maritime trade became more important and shipwrecks became more and more costly, structures were built to house these lights and these structures became known as lighthouses. Hawaii's larger lighthouses were built between the mid-1800s to the early 1900s. These structures at first held oil vapor burning lamps, which were later replaced by electric lights. The light's beams were directed by a highly enhanced series of curved prisms, which made up the lens around the light bulbs. The lenses, called Fresnel lenses, were named after the French physicists who developed them. The lens is contained in a glass-walled room called the Lantern Room. The Lantern Room is supported by the lighthouse tower. The centers of the larger lighthouses were hollow cylinders in which large weights passed through. The weights would drop down slowly and turn the lenses much in the same way as the old cuckoo clocks used to work. In the old days, the lighthouse keepers had to crank the weights up every few hours to keep the lantern turning. For that reason, the lighthouse keepers lived in houses next to the lighthouse. As time went on, some of the large lights were replaced by automated lights. Eventually, ships and aircraft depended on LORAN, or long-range radio navigation systems, and then GPS, or global positioning systems, to determine their locations. Though the importance of the lights themselves are now less critical for navigation than they were before, some of Hawaii's larger lights are still shining, as in the case of the Diamond Head and Makapu lights on Oahu. In all, there are over 40 lights in Hawaii, but most of them are considered minor lights that mark the entrance to harbors. Some of the larger Hawaii lights are the Kumukahi light at Kapoho, Hawaii's most eastern point, and the Kauhola Point Lighthouse near Kapa'ao. This lighthouse was demolished in 2009 because of erosion near its base. Hawaii's first light station, other than traditional signal fires, was a nine-foot-tall structure on the Lahaina waterfront, erected in 1840. After several sturdier versions were built, it now stands at 55 feet tall. The larger lights on Oahu include Aloha Tower. 
And there's one at Barber's Point, Kapolei. And shining from the cliffs of Mount Leahi is the Diamond Head Lighthouse. The Makapu'u Lighthouse on Oahu's east shore holds the largest Fresnel lens called a hyperradiant lens. It is 12 feet tall with over a thousand prisms in it. On the island of Molokai, the light station at Kalaupapa is the tallest lighthouse in Hawaii. When you arrive at the Lihue Airport on Kauai, you can see the Nawiliwili light. And on the north shore of Kauai, the Kilauea Lighthouse is one of the most famous lighthouses in the world. Thousands of people come to see this lighthouse each year, and I was fortunate to live and work there in the 1980s and 1990s. The Kilauea Lighthouse is credited with saving the first Trans-Pacific flight from the mainland to Honolulu in 1927. Two pilots aboard the airplane called the Bird of Paradise had taken off from Oakland and had overshot Oahu. They were dangerously close to running out of gas when in the lower horizon they noticed a double flashing light. Each lighthouse had a unique pattern or timing of flashes which helped navigators know which light they were seeing. Realizing it was the Kilauea light, they adjusted their course and safely landed at the Schofield Airfield on Oahu to the cheers of spectators. You can learn more about Hawaii's lighthouses through these books or by visiting lighthousefriends.com. Now get your paper or pencil or whatever you want to draw with ready, because when we return, I'll show you how to draw the Makapu Lighthouse. So now I'm going to show you how to draw the Makapu Lighthouse. I'll be using a pen so you can see, but whatever you use when you're starting off, just press softly in softly. case you want to erase or change lines, yeah? All right, here we go. So I'm going to start with the cliff right around here, and right a little flat area where the lighthouse lives, okay? That's where the Makapu Lighthouse is going to sit. And I'm going to put the base of a lighthouse, just a thin little oval where it sits right there. And right here, I'm going to put like the main structure of the lighthouse. And it's going to be kind of like a rectangle, but on the top, it's going to be a little thinner than it is on the bottom. Now, what can I use to help me? You can use just about anything if you want to make straight lines. First of all, you can just, you know, eyeball it and like that. But if you really want to get straight lines, you can also, you know, get the help of a straight edge like a ruler or you know a book or something like that and so if you're having trouble getting straight lines which lighthouses got some straight lines on them they got some curved lines but if you want help with straight lines just get something with an edge on it and go like that and just you know now for the lens housing that's where the lens is kept you know it's like a it's like the light and all these prisms around it that focus the light into a beam. That's going to be up here. And we're just going to be able to put almost like a little square or rectangle right here. Okay, so you got this kind of rectangle that's a little tapered off. You got a line there. And you got the lens house, which is not quite a square, but more like a rectangle over here. Now for the cap, I don't know, the hat, what do you call it? I'll find out. We're going to make a little bit of an angle there. Beep, beep, beep. And I can curve that line. The curve of my hand is just right. And let's make a little triangle up here, okay? All right. Yeah, now you can get a ruler or you can just use your hand, okay? Now the next thing I'm going to do, there's a little bit of a ball up here. So I'm going to put a ball about that big. And on top of the ball, I'm going to put a little spike. Oh, and I think that's so all the little birdies don't just go sit on the ball all day and have a ball, you know? Anyway, I just got the shape of my Makapu Lighthouse. 
Now I'm going to start adding some details and lighthouses, yeah, they got a lot of details. So we're going to do our best here. Around the base, I am going to give it a little bit of a curve. You notice that when you're looking at a lighthouse dead on, that line is going to be nice and level. But as you look down towards the bottom and up towards the top, the lines curve just a little. Yeah, you see how I curve this top just a little, so slightly. And I curve this top just a little. That gives the viewer the impression they're looking straight on here, but looking down and looking up there. Now for the door on the Makapu Lighthouse, I'm going to put a little doorway. It's a little angled right there. Say you're just kind of flying along with the bird. You can see the lighthouse like that and the door right there. Now right over here, there's a little bit of a window. And again, we're using slightly curved lines on the top and the bottom. Just a little curve like that, telling the viewer that we're looking slightly down at that looking dead on right there and looking slightly up at the cap. All right, now for the walk around base, I'm going to make just a little bit of a sphere shape, do, 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 just like a plate, you know, it's like you're looking at a plate sideways. And then above from that, I'm going to make little poles for railings. And I'm going to make a little shape coming around like that. Do, 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 do. Just about like that, okay? And that's the railing that goes in front of the lens. Now for the lens, you know where the light comes from, I'm going to put like a big this, you know? That's the light itself, yeah? And you can put some uh, prisms in there, but you can do whatever you want, you know, for the shape in there. Here's what I'm doing. Now on top of that, I'm going to put some bars where the glass window panes are connected to and seems like every lighthouse got different shapes of their lens room. You know, the Makapu lighthouse, it's got a couple of lines going this way. There. And then some lines that start coming down this way. You know, make them skinny on the sides, the distance between the gaps. And as they start facing you, they get a little bigger, a little farther apart, okay? Yeah. All right. And now that we've got our base there, we can start putting some bushes, little plants and things. You can start putting some poles that are around the base of the lighthouse. Okay. And then you can start getting into your detail, depending on how much details you want. There's also like three little windows right here. And in recent years, they've been closed up. Before, they used to be vents. They used to be partially open. Just like this used to have a little window in it. So maybe you might like to just put a little window. You might like to put a doorknob over there. You know, we're doing kind of a simplified version of the lighthouse because the actual lighthouse has got so much details, you know. But speaking of details, go ahead and have fun with the details. Putting some bars up here that holds the railing. Bing, bing. And you can put a couple another little lines here. And they even got a little railing up here. Bink. A little railing that's right above there that also has some little lines or bars there. Now go ahead and get some action in here like uh, bushes you know rocks whatever you might like to put you can put a horizon back there in fact if you're looking at the makapu lighthouse from this angle if you're flying up there with a bird or something you might see molokai back there island you know and in the sky you might see some clouds like that Ooh, you can even put some birds because this is where the birds like to hang out, you know, in the sky. All right, so now that you got your lighthouse formed up and you got things generally the way you want it, you know, if you feel that you've made some lines too big, too small, in the wrong place, whatever, that's why we press softly in the beginning. Softly. Now I'm gonna get a little bigger pen, see? And I'm gonna go over the shapes. I'm gonna tighten them up. In other words, I'm gonna make them look a little more how I want them to look. So this is kind of just a base to 
put all your details on. I am going to go ahead and make the mount in here. I'll make the base of the lighthouse. You notice that I'm not using all the lines that I've drawn. Yeah, some bushes, rocks, scraggles and smiggles. Okay, now I'm going to go and trace the outlines of the lighthouse and make them just the way I want them with a bigger pen. All right. And there you have a Makapu lighthouse. <laughs> now go ahead and shade your lighthouse drawing and make it look any way you want. And don't forget your signature. When we return, we'll start a new section of the show called Art Talk, and then I'll give you some tips on painting lighthouses. On Oahu's east coast lies a special place called Makapu'u. On its cliffs is the Makapu'u Lighthouse, which was first built in 1909. Its 12-foot tall hyperradiant lens is the largest in the world, and its light still shines from within it, signaling mariners and aircraft of its location. In 2009, Naturally Hawaiian Gallery in Waimanalo hosted the 100th anniversary events for the Makapu Lighthouse, including an art show, a hike with some of the old caretakers, and a t-shirt designed by myself and artist Nick Black. The original black and white design has now been recreated in color and printed in Hawaii, available in women's and men's sizes small to 3X. The t-shirts and mugs are available at Hawaiian Island Cafe in the Waimanalo Shopping Center or at patrickcheng.com. A portion of the proceeds go to benefit the Friends of Waimanalo. All right, on this show, I'm going to introduce a new segment called Art Talk. And I chose the Lighthouse episode to do this on because hopefully we can shed some light on some of these artistic subjects. Now, the first lesson I'm going to talk to you about is self-talk. And it's not just the talk that you talk to yourself. It's the talk that you say about yourself. I can't even count the number of times people come to me and say, Patrick, uh, I'm not an artist or I can't draw a straight line or, or whatever and it's just people's habits to make excuses about why they might not like to try something but I'd like to encourage you to watch the words that come out of your mouth because what you say is your truth and you can choose anything you want to say so you know sometimes the lesson is not just saying positive stuff like I am an artist and I can draw I can paint but it can also just be not saying the negative stuff like I can't and I'm not, okay? If you feel the word can't coming up, you just swallow the tea and then you can. So in the future episodes, I'm going to pick a different subject concerning art. And it might not just be drawing and painting physical uh, techniques. It might be your mindset of what it takes to become a good artist and what it takes to become successful in your own mind. So remember, your words are your truth and you can choose anything you want to say. I am an artist. I can draw. I can paint. I tell you what, the people out there having the most fun doing it <laughs> are the best artists in my eyes. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs> Now lighthouses give you a special opportunity to work with several types of painting techniques. Notice the shape of the base of the lighthouse. Big white cylinder. White spaces are rarely just white spaces. White spaces are an opportunity to add subtle hints of color. In the direct light that's getting hit by the sun, we got more warmer white so you can add a touch of yellow, orange, and in the shadows, in the purpler sections, you can add touches of blue, pink, even some rust color yellow. The windows of the lens room are where you can give the illusion of shape and form using transparent glazes. In this painting, I tried to create miles of distance behind the lighthouse 
by adding a lot of sky color to the mountains and even more so the farther they go away from the lighthouse. The bright red cap of the lighthouse and the stairs give us an opportunity to add some bright complementary colors to this scene. I'd say the most difficult thing about lighthouses are the amount of straight and accurate lines you have to produce to create a good likeness of a lighthouse. When I need to make thin, accurate lines, I get the paint into just the right consistency and load the brush. And I realize that even my heartbeat could shake my hand too much. So I try to start my stroke in between heartbeats, much like a pool player or a golfer or a sharpshooter might do. Sometimes an artist may use a pole to lean against the edge of the canvas and steady their hand with. And don't forget your signature. Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I hope you enjoyed learning about Hawaii's lighthouses and how to draw and paint them. I'd love to see your art, so why don't you send it to my website at aloha at patrickching.com. <laughs> Bye-bye.